Bellator, NYC, Sonnen versus Silva. It's going to be a big event Saturday, June 24th at Madison Square Garden in New York City. And we're going to talk to Bellator lightweight champ, Michael Chandler. Hey, Michael, so what's going on? Tell us a little bit about this fight coming up for you. You're defending your title on this big show. Yeah, I sure am, man. It's been, uh, this is the 20th fight. This is the 20th fight in my career, so it's a perfect kind of uh, 20th anniversary performance that I'm going to get to be able to put on uh, at, under the bright lights of Madison Square Garden, the world's most iconic arena. So it's, it's literally a dream come true. You know, I've, I've been saying it since this fight got announced that there's a couple things you want to do as a pro fighter. You want to get big fights, you want to win, win world titles, and you want to fight at Madison Square Garden. Those are kind of the three things um, that every fighter wants to check off of their checklist, if you will. And uh, I've gotten to do all but one. And uh, June 24th, I get to see that third one come to fruition. And I'm excited. Now you're going against undefeated Brent Primus. What do you know about him? And in preparation for him, do you more concentrate on what you're doing or do you check and see some of the things that he's done in the past? Um, you know, Brent's a, Brent's a tough guy. Um, he's young in the sport. He's, you know, he's 32 years old. He's only had seven fights, so he's relatively inexperienced. He's, uh, he's a tough guy, and he's shown that he can go out there and win fights. Um, but I always focus on about 90% myself, where I can get better, um, how how I can implement my six techniques, how I can, um, areas where I can improve, and then about the last 10%, maybe 15%, is uh, kind of focusing on where my opponent is strong and where he's deficient in areas, you know. But most of the time it's spent focusing on my constant pursuit of becoming the best mixed martial artist I possibly can, you know. And um, I've done that since the beginning of my career, and it's always, uh, it's always worked out well for me. And um, I'm the best fighter that I've ever been. Um, right now, and I'm excited to go out there and prove that. Tell us about Combat Club. It's new. It's in Lantana, Florida, which is in South Florida near West Palm Beach, and the trainers and the people that are working there with you. Yeah, it's a great group of guys, great, great set of coaches, and it's uh, been a great training camp. You know, I, I live in San Diego, but I've done my last couple camps down here in Florida, and um, you know, you can't be successful without good people around you. You know, everybody can talk about how I did this and I did that, um, and I won this fight. But really, it was the trainers and the coaches and the, and the strength and conditioning coaches and the training partners that really got a, really got you to where um, where you can get your hands raised. And um, that's what I have here. And, um, I've just been getting after it and feeling sharp, feeling uh, on point. My weight is great. And uh, honestly, I don't think I could have had a better training camp. So I'm going into this fight fully prepared and excited to go out there and perform. Growing up, your background was in amateur wrestling, correct? It sure was. So when you're going from amateur wrestling in high school and then college, and you did you did very well in high school, and that would have been in, in High Ridge, Missouri, correct? Yep, High Ridge, Missouri. All right, so you're doing that high school, but then I read about you ended up going to Missouri for college, and you were a walk-on in college. So I just was curious how that you got to be that, that you were very good as a high school wrestler, but you only could be a walk-on, because then you had a really good college career. Yeah, you know what, I mean, I, I, uh, I appreciate you saying that. I don't think I had that great of a, a high school career. I wish, I wish it would have been better. You know, I, I was never a state champion. Um, I qualified for state all four years, but fell short basically every year. Um, my senior year, I took second, and I was getting, you know, I was getting smaller school offers. I was getting full ride offers from Division two, Division three, NAIA school, junior colleges, and uh, but something in my heart of hearts said that, you know, what what if what happens if you go to Division three or NAIA and you become a national champion? There's, you know, what if you, you can never live with your decision of never competing at the Division One level. And uh, so I decided to walk on to Mizzou. You know, I had known a Mizzou wrestling, grew up a Mizzou wrestling fan, and uh, walked on in uh, 2004. And, yeah, by, by 2005 I was, you know, redshirting, and, and then I started as a freshman and then qualified for NCAAs all four years and was an All-American 
in um, the very tough 157 pound weight class in uh, 2009. So I think it was just a testament to you know to, to any anyone who's thinking about taking a leap of faith, anyone who's thinking that you know you have two options: the easy way and the road less traveled, the the, the hard way, the the way that might end up with you falling flat on your face and getting embarrassed and getting laughed at. Because I had a lot of people saying, "Why are you Why are you trying to go left on the zoo? Why don't you?" You'll never make it there. You might never start. You might never make the team. You might quit. You might this. You might that. But I just didn't listen. And I went ahead and walked on with no scholarship and decided uh, this is going to be my life for the next five years. And I embedded myself into those wrestling maps in that wrestling room. And here I am, a, a Division I All-American. And you also obtained your degree in personal finance management services with a minor in real estate, correct? So it worked out great for you as far as your wrestling career there and then also graduating college. So then what happened from there as far as, okay, let me try MMA. And hey, was there any thought of doing something else in combat sports, even something like pro wrestling, which Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle, and amateur wrestlers have partaken to? Yeah, you know, I think I was a little bit, you know, too small for the big bright lights of pro wrestling even though, you know, I could have been like a, a Ray Mysterio Jr. type where I could run and jump and do flips and do all that kind of stuff. But I think, um, you know, luckily for me, I had two older brothers um, in the sport. You know, they were like the older brothers that I never had, Ben Asker and Tyron Woodley. And uh, they've both been extremely successful in the sport. Um, you know, Tyron Woodley is the UFC champion, Ben Asker is the 1FC champion. So right about the time... You know, I was getting a little bit older. They they started fighting uh, right around my sophomore year, junior year, and you know, I was figured I'd give it a try. You know, and, and uh, I kind of had that that end, if you will. You know, so I, I got I got pretty lucky if you think about it. You know, having two guys kind of come out and pave the way, and I was able to kind of just follow in their footsteps. And here I am, world champion, getting to defend my belt, Madison Square Garden. That's right. Saturday, June twenty fourth. It's going to be on pay-per-view and also it'll be on spike we'll have something earlier for some of the other events but your fight and some of the bigger fights will be uh later on and that will be at madison square garden in new york city you're going to be defending the lightweight championship when you you mentioned because you're from san you're living in san diego and you mentioned ray mysterio and that's another san diego guy correct yeah, i think he is actually yeah i've never met him but yeah he's uh I think he's from down there, like in Chula Vista or something. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know if there was any connection there, but it's just that you guys live in the area because you mentioned him. Uh, when you when you were looking, when you were fighting in high school and college, did you go? Do you remember going up against any talent that later on became pro wrestlers or MMA fighters? Mm, no, no, none that I can think. Well, yeah, no, none that I can think of actually. Uh, yeah, none, none that I can think of. I mean, if I really think about it, I mean, I, I wrestled around the same time as a, as a couple guys, um, but nobody that I actually kind of had any kind of uh, radar on that ended up coming out and fighting. Now, I read on your Twitter that you are a Christian, correct? Yep. Okay, so how important then is religion to you in not only your walk of life and sport, but just your walk in life and family and your relationship with God? I mean, it's extremely important. You know, it's something that, that, that keeps me driven. It keeps me grounded. It's something that um, something that kind of tries to keep me... It, it, it keeps me as humble as possible, and it, and it reminds me that um, what I'm fighting for. You know, whenever I made the decision to fight, I, I knew... It wasn't going to be about me, and it wasn't going to be about my world title and, and the lights that I'm under and, uh, and the, the the money that I make. It, it was going to be for the people around me. It was going to be for people that I've never even met um, who can kind of see me in the way that I um, the way that I conduct myself, the way that I live my life, the words that I speak um, that were going to make a big impact in people's lives. And, and I've just been extremely fortunate to have a, a great platform. That was always giving me a great platform, and, and you know, June 24th is the biggest platform that I will ever have, you know. Um, so it's extremely important for me in the win. Um, it's extremely important for me in the, the losses because uh, they're not easy. You know, when you when you pour your life into something as, as volatile and as, as roller coaster um, ride like as, uh, as mixed martial arts is, you got to have some something to keep you grounded and something to look look to and some some strength to find outside of your own personal strength and that's really what my, my faith is and that's and every single person I have in my inner circle is, is a Christian and they, they believe um, 
Michael, do you have social media for fans? I do, yes. I'm uh, at Mike Chandler in the day on uh, Twitter and Instagram, and I have a Facebook fan page, the Michael Chandler in the day fan page, and I'm at Mike Chandler in the day on, on Snapchat. So I love interacting with the fans. I mean, social media is, is such a, you know, it's, it's uh, not always the, the best thing because you can hear a lot of negativity, but there's so much positivity with the social media, and I love I love talking to the fans. I love hearing from the fans, whether it's positive or negative. I love speaking with them. I love being available. Um, so anybody out there, just follow me there. And hit me with any uh, questions, problems, concerns, anything. Let's we'll talk. Michael from High Ridge, Missouri to Mizzou to San Diego to South Florida. Thank you so much. And hey, go Tigers. Yeah, go Tigers. You know it. Thanks. All right. Take care, brother.